Hey, what's good with YouTube? It's your boy Rojo, and this is the Rojo Room, man. What we're going to talk about today is the neighborhood, well-known neighborhood, but respected neighborhood in L.A., known as Big Hazard. And uh, this this just covers a little bit of an indictment that them gentlemen went through down there, you know, some time back, man. But uh, we'll get right to it, man. The indictment of 38 members of the Los Angeles street gang Big Hazard once again puts the national spotlight on the Mexican Mafia, a treacherous and violent criminal organization also known as La M that has deep roots inside of California's prison system. Federal officials spent Wednesday arresting members of the Boyle Heights Bay Street Gang, which has strong ties to La M. The 800 law enforcement personnel that conducted the raids. Hold on. 800. That's impressive. The 800 law enforcement personnel that conducted the raids considered it a day of accountability for the gang that has been active since the early 1940s. And we're going on 80 years. The Hazard Gang is a multi generational based gang in the East Los Angeles area. According to the indictment, it is part of a network of Latino gangs controlled by the MA. The Mexican Mafia is an organized group of individuals that control the narcotics trafficking and other criminal activities within California's penal system and, through that control, controls the activity of Latino gangs like the Hazard Gang on the streets, the indictment read. The Mexican Mafia is the daddy of all prison gangs, a turbocharged entity that demands respect with clock-like, orange-like ultraviolence throughout the California Department of Corrections, as well as all of Southern California. The CDC is the biggest prison system in the nation and holds the distinction of birthing the most notorious prison gangs our country knows, like the Aryan Brotherhood, La Nuestra Familia, the Black Gorilla Family, and the aforementioned Mexican Mafia. They originated in the California prison systems in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and have grown to rule a vast empire of criminal activity stretching from Southern California to Arizona, in Colorado and virtually all the Southwest gangs of Mexican heritage, Serenos or Southsiders, are under their control. In prison and in on the streets, they are one of the most feared gangs in America. The MA is clearly the most powerful, powerful organized force in prisons and on the streets. There is no other organization that can compare to its power projection beyond prison walls, as well as a number of soldiers underneath its command. Tony Raphael, author of the Mexican Mafia says, their intelligence network is phenomenal. Something can happen in Whittier this morning and by the afternoon, the brothers in Pelican Bay will know all about it. And by the next morning, they've already issued instructions to address the problem. The Crips, Bloods, AB, NLR, none of them have that level of command and control. The Mexican Mafia run their empire from the penitentiaries to the streets of LA using gangs like Big Hazard to maintain control of the drug trade. They act as suppliers and wholesalers with a direct line to the Mexican drug cartels. Much like the TV show Breaking Bad, the Mexican mafia are real life methamphetamine kingpins. Their world is a secret and shadowy one. What little has been revealed has emerged from trumped up RICO indictments like the one against Big Hazard where the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act is used to target gangs. Movies like American Me, which starred James Almost, cast more light, but the fallout from that film included the murder of some of those involved who had angered MA shot callers with their portrayals in the film. In the Latino community, the legacy of the Mexican Mafia spans multiple generations. Keep in mind, we're now going into our fourth and fifth generations of street gangsters. Diamond Street, for instance, was one of the original players in the Zoot Suit Riots in 1942. That neighborhood is still around 60 is still around 60 years later and still producing shot callers and brothers, Tony Raphael says. The gang culture and by extension, the MA culture has penetrated deep into the Latino community. MA friendly or sympathetic individuals can be found in every occupation you can imagine. Sheriff's deputy, LAPD, DA's office, sheriff's department, county clerks, FBI field office in downtown, you name it. Gang warlords. Lockdown and supermaxes like Pelican Bay pass on instructions to thousands of followers. Orders include instructions to kill errant members, directions on how to collect street taxes from free world members who are dealing drugs, and demands for retribution against rival gangs. 
Pelican Bay is where the MAs, the MAs hold ultimate authority over their people. No one can be stabbed or beaten without their permission. And when they green light an individual or even a whole neighborhood, it's open season. The whole purpose of the gang is to generate money for its incarcerated leaders. That is where the subordinate gangs like Big Hazard come in. The Southsiders, all the Southern California Hispanic gangs united as one, have a tremendous amount of pull or clout with the prison walls. Quake, a 17 year veteran of the CDC says, reason being is they are being organized by one brain, a brain that is linked to the Mexican mafia. Being organized and working as one unit has many benefits. Serenos are told when to work out, who to associate with, and how to distribute any funds they make from illegal activity. Staff tends to reward the Hispanic population for such a system by showing favoritism toward them when it comes to things like job appointments. They put them in key positions within the facility where they can look out for their own. They receive the highest pay numbers. The Southsiders use their organization to manipulate staff. And from the power structure within the prisons, they manipulate and control events on the streets. Robert Morrill, a former gang detective and author of The Mexican Mafia, The Story, said there is little the authorities can do. The Mexican Mafia today has been targeted by numerous RICO acts. However, as with other prison gangs, this often spreads them out as more and more MA members were moved into federal prisons all across the United States. They have been impacted by law enforcement and correction suppression efforts and lockdowns, but prison gangs are very good at adapting to these efforts and circumventing us through abusing the system by using dirty lawyers and having other people such as camaradas, wives, and girlfriends handle their business on outside, handle their business on outside of prison or out on general prison population yards. It's just not true. The original MA members like Shy. Cadena and Weddle Buff Flores, or relatively early MA like Joe Morgan, were a different breed. <clears throat> it has been said they were the Coke generation. Later members who joined, like Boxer and Enriquez, have been called the Pepsi generation. Many of the ones around today are more like the Sprite generation, but there still are some old school left. There are still some killers, but as they have grown, many of the old rules about honor and respect have gone away. Many former members stated that it is why they left after feeling disillusioned. Of course, many also left MA for their own selfish reasons. The indictment against Big Hazard is just the latest in a string of indictments to dismantle the gang, but as their leaders are career prison gangsters serving life sentence inside the belly of the beast, all the prosecutions are doing is giving them more foot soldiers to fight their battles. With the mystique of the organization ever present in the Latino community, younger men are always willing to take up the cause and emulate their uncles, dads, brothers, or big homies. In the neighborhoods they grow up in, prison is a rite of passage, and being a street gangster is a viable career choice. The money that drugs generate is their way to achieve the American dream in a sort of twisted Scarface type fashion. In the barrios of Los Angeles, the gangsters get the most props and respect. Those that earn their stripes by going to prison and taking the case are the ones that are admired. The culture is so embedded that it won't change anytime soon, no matter what law enforcement does or how many more people they indict. The Mexican mafia is here to stay and they can reach out and touch someone if things don't go their way. That is the ultimate power they hold. Very interesting. But uh, yeah, shit, I guess that was more really about the big homies than about Hazard, man. But Hazard has a very, very deeply entrenched history. You know, Hazard, Boyle Heights, other groups like White Fence. You know what I'm saying? They've been they've been around forever, man. You know, and uh, you know they've earned their respect. Same with Florencia. You know, they got a lot of well-respected neighborhoods that have been deeply involved and fully active with all the, the behaviors and activities that, that go along with representing such a group, you know what I mean? But anyway, Big Hazard, famous neighborhood, you obviously know the big homies, and that's that, man, but uh, this little something, your boy Rojo, I'll holler at you later.